to some simplistic message. Uh, I, I say that because I, I think that we need to revisit some of these passages again. And I want to talk on the gift of the Holy Ghost tonight. And so if you're heading your paper, I'd like to talk on, I would like to begin on uh, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about that because the Lord has dealt with my heart. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been really moved by God to revisit uh, some of the, the doctrines that we hold to in, in this church. We believe in three baptisms here. We, we take a little different stand than some in the religious world. Uh, they believe that uh, in water baptism, we believe that. We believe that that's a, that's a Bible doctrine. But we also believe in the baptism. Everybody say baptism. 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 It is a baptism, by the way. Not just a light touch. It doesn't accompany something. It doesn't, it's not an add-on. It is a baptism. It is something unique and separate uh, than, than water baptism. It comes at a different time. You don't receive the Holy Ghost at water baptism. You receive it as a separate baptism. You receive it as, as a separate um, uh, a separate outpouring. It isn't added on, but it's a separate outpouring. The reason we say there's three baptisms is because the baptism uh, of uh, water baptism, uh, which, by the way, does not uh, remove sin, as all of you know, but it's an act of good conscience toward God, the, uh, the prophet said. Yes. And uh, But then the, the Holy Ghost baptism, spirit. and then the, that is spirit baptism. Thank you, those are interchangeable. But I, I tell you, uh, I like the word Holy Spirit. I just like the word Holy Spirit. Uh, I don't always say Holy Spirit. The Bible says both, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. But I like Holy Spirit because the origin uh, is, is, is right. The translators got it right. Spirit means life. Ghost means life. But God, you have to begin where it starts. You have to begin at where it starts. And God is a spirit, John 4. And I don't know what verse. Somebody can help me with that, but... Uh, if I was Christian science or if I was uh, from the metaphysical world, I would say that, uh, you know, yes, see, God is, God is spirit. You, he's everywhere. He's without limit. He's without end. He's, uh, he's omnipresent. He's omnipotent, omniscient, all of that. Yes, but wait a minute. He's not just a good feeling. He's not just air. He's not vapor. He's not just... The sun he isn't just a makeup of chemicals. God is a, everybody say a, 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 spirit. a spirit. Now that's a pole. That's holding up this building. That's a pole. That means that he has dimension. That means that, that he has, there's something about him. I might augment that with a scripture. And I, I'm coming right back here, but look at Ephesians chapter 3. And this is a teaching, so uh, we ought to just, I think, nail down some of these things. But in the uh, uh, in Ephesians 3, I believe it is, he said that Christ, verse 17, if you have your Bible, when you have it, say, I have it, Ephesians 3, 17. When you have it, say, I have it. Okay. He said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, that you may be able to con that 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 you may uh, may may be able to comprehend with all of the saints. Now I put that. I don't put that just Corinthian saints. I put that. I put those saints there. There is a comprehension. There is an adding that has been added to the kingdom of God. All through every generation. Solomon said, One generation cometh, another goeth with the Lord, but the earth abideth forever. Now, when did that start? It started at Abel. It started with Abel. 
Sure it did. The, uh, the righteous line started with Abel. <coughs> and it, uh, it come through, it come through Abel. And so there, there's a line of saints throughout all of the scriptures that had a knowledge of God. And the Bible said they shall all be taught of God. Not of man, but of God. Real truth is given by God. Men may speak, but it's never, don't, never misunderstand it as men's intellect. Remember, if you know anything about God, you got it from God. Can I have an amen? amen. Yeah. Yeah, see, you, you got that from God. Uh, you, you got that from God. Even when the disciples were, were very inquisitive about it and didn't even know what they were trying to ask for when they did, they finally, he finally showed them, he showed Simon Peter, he said, but, uh, he said, but who do men say that I am? Well, there's a lot of ideas about it. Yeah. There, he wasn't the only Jesus. Oh, no. He wasn't the only Jesus. There were other Jesuses. He wasn't the only one that hung on a tree. There were other men that hung upon a tree. But there was only one that hung upon the tree as the curse for sin and as the redemption for man. Yes. Only Amen. one. Only one. And no, no one else could do that. No one else could. He said, I, I, I gave you that scripture. I restored that which I took not away. Well, who took it away? Adam. Adam did. But through Abel, there was another generation. Now, he was killed. What else did God do? He does like he always has. He took another step and anointed Seth. And from that time on, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. So there was a righteous line that ran from that Old Testament right on into the New Testament. So there is a line of saints. By the way, I, 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 I must say this. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 53, there... This, or is it uh, 52? I need that. Uh, I need you to get that, Brother Steve. It says, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. That, that needs work. That needs, that, that, that needs work because that's what I'm working on. There's a knowledge in God that comes only from God that he gave to Simon Peter. <laughs> While you're looking for that, I'll finish this. He said, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. But he said, but my Father, which is in heaven, he said, blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. That just means that, that you didn't get it from a, 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 from a human origin. You didn't get it from a human sprung base. It's not philosophy. It's not Darwinism. It's not a, it's, it, it, it didn't come from a man's origin. So it, it came from a different origin, which Jesus said, you're from beneath. But he said, I'm from above. Now, when you're dishing out something, you don't want to dish it out from beneath. He wasn't giving from beneath. He was giving from above. Yeah. And so, what was this knowledge? Was it scientific knowledge? By his knowledge, uh, and he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. That is, God the Father saw the travail of his own son. And he was satisfied in the sense that he, he became the complete sacrifice and the only sacrifice that, that, that God would, would accept uh, as a complete atonement for man's fall. That's, that's what that means. Because it, the, the blood of goats, uh, according to Hebrews, the blood of bulls and the blood of calves was, was, was only added. They were just added because God wanted to try to keep a righteous line in the earth. So he added that to keep man's contact with God. In fact, every one of those things, I taught a lesson not long ago that Jesus is in every page of the Bible. Well, he is, but they were all added in there. You take the feast weeks, for example, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the Passover. He was the Passover lamb. He, he was the Passover lamb. And then, and then the next one, uh, the, uh, the feast of the unleavened bread. Now look at this. He, uh, he was the feast of the unleavened bread. They were to purge uh, seven days there with the purge. I'm in Exodus now, chapter 12. Uh, for those looking, I'm not skipping it through the Bible. If you stay with me, you'll see that this is this is in line. I'm just working. I'm building a case, uh, like a lawyer building a case. I know where I'm going. I'm just laying the bricks in there. How many can say keep laying brick? Praise God. I want to keep laying brick because I want you to see where where I'm going. 
that he's in every step and he's building towards something. I found out something in, in the Jewish law uh, the other day. I was just tremendously thrilled about it. Uh, I've talked to someone and she's here tonight. She studied uh, Hebrew and she's got me very interested and I've been diving into Hebrew texts and uh, things and words that I, I can't even uh, pronounce, but it feels good to be trying to swim in it. You may not be able to understand it all, but I, I have been kind of diving into some of these things, and uh, I discovered that even today in Orthodox, uh, when they have the, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, they take these, uh, they take the unleavened bread, and they put it in, they, in, into three separate napkins. They put a, a piece on the bottom, and they put a piece in the middle, and they have a piece on top, and all of this is interwoven uh, in a napkin. And when they have the ceremony, they, they, uh, the, the father of the house, who, by the way, is the priest of his house, he goes and he breaks off a piece in the middle, and then he goes hide it somewhere in the house, and the little Jewish boy goes looking for it, and the, and the Jewish child in the family that finds it, he gets a gift. I said, oh, I, I see. So Jesus, there was, when they ran to the, if he was crucified on Passover, and then he was in the tomb, then he must be the unleavened bread laying in the tomb. Uh, they found a napkin that uh, obviously he was gone, and they come running to the temple, or that is the tomb, and some of them found that he was gone, and then there was one in John 16 that he said, touch my side. Yes. And he put his hand in his side, and he, then, he then he appeared uh, to the disciples that during the 40 days. He gave them on the road to Emmaus, he broke the bread again, and he gave them the bread. And for finding the piece of bread, he gave them the gift of the Holy Ghost. Sure he did. And that he was that piece of broken bread. How many are glad he's the unleavened bread? That he couldn't, he couldn't do anything but fulfill all of those things. And of course they counted the Omer for 49 days and then came Pentecost. And, and now we're pushing down toward, um, what is it, atonement and uh, 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 the end gathering, of course, uh, a tabernacle. tabernacle. So now we're coming down toward the end of this thing. And some of it's already been fulfilled, but some of it is being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. And that's why these brethren working like they did inspired me. See, we've got to get it. How many come to get something now? Yeah. Do you want something now? Everybody say now. now. See, now. Now is important. That doesn't negate what God's doing. You, you can't tear the pages of history out, and you can't tear the pages uh, of unfulfilled prophecy out of your Bible, but he's doing something now. See, he's, he's, he's letting us see that there's something available to us now. And so... Um, uh, Christ came to bring knowledge, but not just scientific knowledge, but by his knowledge. Now go back to Ephesians 3. I want to tie this up real quick here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, Ephesians 3. See, he, he justified many by knowledge, by, by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many? That's Christ. Now look at this line right here. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Every gift you have, if you have a gift tonight, that gift must operate in love. If it's operating in ambition, you're going to lose it. If it's operating in, in something that's a uh, some kind of a pretense, if you really don't love God's people, don't minister to them. Don't try to help them. But you must love the sheep. Do you love your own children? Then we must love the sheep. The very first thing you got to do is love the sheep. 
He said, Whoever sell me more than these, John 21. He said, Of course, Lord, you know I love you. I've been with you for three and a half years. I can wish that where you went, walk where you went, and I was with everywhere you went, I was there. No, he didn't ask him that, did he? He said, Feed my sheep. Change, change your focus to my sheep. Change.